um, one of our partners that we collaborate with, it, this is Esri's uh, front end base map, uh, front end uh, web mapping applications. So what the beauty of that is Kinetica, as we mentioned earlier, since we provide an OGC compliant web service for, for, for our map renderings, you can actually consume Kinetica maps and, and data um, from any of the web mapping providers, for example, that support that OGC specification, which is pretty much all of them. So whether it's Esri or you're an open source user, um, being able to consume maps that come out of Kinetica and integrate them into your existing applications is, is relatively simple. Um, so in this case, we're gonna go through a couple examples. And this first one we start off with is actually a, um, an example or a demonstration based off uh, telematic, telco signal data. So the first thing I'm going to do here is um, turn on um, a map layer that is pretty noisy, right? So what you're looking at is um, basically Ross mobile signal events, uh, in this case in the Bay Area of San Francisco, and you're actually looking at each one of these, yellow, each one of these white dots represents a, an individual uh, mobile signal event over the period of a 90-day window that was provided to us by this customer. And by looking at this, you're, you're probably thinking the same thing that I am, is that you know, that's a lot of information, it's very noisy, there's probably some corrections that need to happen, um, but I can't really tell anything beyond just where big blobs and messes of data are occurring. So when you look at the, the geospatial and visualization capabilities of what Kinetica offers, um, you know, we have a couple different options and different ways to analyze this data. And my fundamental goal as someone who is looking at this to try to make sense of it is, how do I take this complexity of this data, the volume, the, the locations, and, and the underlying attribution about all these mobile signal events, and how do I turn that into something useful that I can then turn into an actionable event within my organization? So the first thing I'll do is I'll say, instead of looking at this as just a big blob of individual dots, Maybe I'll want to look at each of those dots in a unique way, in the sense that I want to do a class break style renderer on it. And what that means is that I can then color code each one of those events based on an attribute value. So in this case, I'm actually color coding those events based on whether or not the signal strength of that mobile event was weak or strong in, in, uh, uh, within the given area. So the weak events are actually showing as purple, and the, and the really strong events are showing as green. But again, in my mind, if I'm, if I'm an analyst looking at this information, that there's still too much data, there's still too much noise in the map to really make sense of it. Um, and being able to draw millions or even billions or trillions of events on a map is really neat. It's kind of a cool party trick is what I like to say. But it, from an analytical standpoint, it doesn't really get you much insight. So that's where, again, we look at GPU compute workloads and the power of something like Kinetica and being able to execute geospatial functions come, is, becomes really valuable. Because what I can do with this then is, instead of looking at this as raw maps, I can do a spatial join uh, function. And what that allows me to do is say, let's say I have, a, let's say I have an area of polygons that represents um, block groups within the San Francisco Bay Area. What I can do is I can actually join all those, all those mobile events to those block groups. And then I can actually color code those block groups to say, show me the areas that are, um, that are most highly concentrated of those, with those mobile events. And I want to color those darker red. So fundamentally what you're looking at here on this screen is the dark red areas show you concentrations of where you have high frequencies or high volumes of those mobile signal events, whereas the lighter areas are uh, lesser, area, uh, lesser block groups. And we can actually keep those spatial joins on large-scale data sets in a very performant manner with Kinetica. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on um, a signal strength layer. So instead of looking at just the raw uh, mobile event frequency, I want to look at the signal strength. Uh, I, want to, I actually want to normalize it by the signal strength. And that's, this actually becomes really interesting, right? So if, if, I'm, if I'm actually the telco provider here in this case, I might want to look at the analysis to say, where do I see high concentrations or high volumes of mobile signal events, basically where I see a lot of activity? And where does that overlay in terms of where I have strong or weak signals? So it's interesting here, as you look at the, the East Bay, as I look at the slider, um, the dark red areas are showing me again, just to reiterate, where I have um, lots of mobile, mobile signal event data, but it's actually a lot, of the, a lot of the darker areas here in the East Bay actually overlay with areas where I don't have very strong coverage. So as an organization, when I, if I go back to the beginning of, 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 of the analysis here, when we started off with all the raw, just the white dots, and how do I turn that into analysis that, that's useful, is by executing these spatial functions, I can then say, as an organization, maybe we need to invest in these specific areas for infrastructure to be able to su support the amount of use that we get uh, consistently there. Um, or alternatively, maybe I wanna look at areas where we have great signal coverage, but we don't have a lot of users. 
And maybe those are areas to target from marketing or sales campaigns for us to try to get more subscribers in those specific areas. So just taking a pause there. So, you know, this, I think this is a really good and fundamental use case to explore with Kinetica. But on the flip side, one thing that we're seeing consistently is organizations that understand that there's primary use cases on the complexity of their data that they're trying to solve. But more and more, we're getting asked with, with um, on GPU workloads to say, how do I, how do I actually take that same data that I'm analyzing for that primary use case and turn it into an asset in a different way I hadn't thought of previously? So I'm going to switch to a slightly different application. And, um, let me and uh, Noyan, before you move off, how much data were you analyzing there? I mean, oh, that's actually you know, are we talking about millions or what's, what is the data set? No, so this data set was actually um, 14 billion records, it's billion with a wow. B, uh, over the course of a 90-day window for, the, for this particular customer. So that is, you know, that, that's a scale of data that we're talking about in terms of um, uh, analyzing and processing. Thanks, Dippy. Um, so let me just set up this, uh, this demo uh, before, we, uh, before we actually go through the interactions. So you're actually looking at a subset of the same data that we were just looking at in the telco analysis. So what this, what this demo has done is we've actually um, pulled out an individual unique mobile subscriber. Obviously, it's been, uh, it's been um, obfuscated and it's been uh, anonymized. Um, but we're looking at a single mobile events, uh, mobile subscribers event history over the 90 day window that we had from that same data set. So we pulled that out. And what you're looking at is that the, the larger areas, the larger uh, circles that you see on the map are actually representing um, analyze, we're basically doing cluster analysis to analyze where, an indiv where that individual mobile subscriber has spent more than 90 minutes at any given point in time over that 90 day window. And then analyze, and then basically we're rendering those on the screen. And the larger the circles are basically where you have higher concentrations or longer periods of dwell time for that individual. So what does that what does that look like when you're looking at the map? So for me anyway, I can pretty safely assume that I can pretty accurately tell where this where this individual lives and works, and I can probably assume that it's right here just because you have really high concentrations of larger circles, and, and it, there's more than just one, right? So it's not a unique event. So I can kind of safely assume that both of these two areas are probably uh, where this individual lives and or works. But more importantly, is we can actually do spatial analysis to understand what's around those areas, right? So we can specifically pinpoint based on those exact locations. Um, I can understand that this user, where, how much time this this individual spends in a certain type of a, a facility or business type or, or or so forth. So in this case, I can see in this chart how much total time over the period of, over the time window of data this person has spent in a private residence versus in a private business versus in in transit versus in a in a restaurant bar or in a, a business that's labeled as a fitness health facility or a or a municipal office or whatever it is right so i can kind of classify where this where this individual spends all of their time more importantly is that if i tr overlay the additional information about when this user um uh, or all the all the movement activity about this user, I can actually reconstruct the routes of where this user has spent their time and how they how they've actually gotten to those locations, right? So I can actually replay and reconstruct how this individual has gotten to all the individual locations that he's that they've spent um, the majority of their dwelling time uh, within the given data set, which is really powerful. And you can actually see that the darker areas are representing the uh, the routes or the paths that were most frequently utilized by this individual over that period of time. And then lastly, if we um, look, just focus on the high activity routes, that's kind of what's, what we're looking at here. We can actually see um, the total unique impressions per route. And what this is basically telling us for, is from, maybe from an advertiser's perspective, I would like to know that for this individual, I wanna know um, how many unique businesses that, or, uh, or storefronts that this individual passes um, over the, uh, uh, as they traverse each of those individual unique routes on a uh, on a total aggregate basis over this time window, and then lastly, um, for this particular customer who wanted to analyze this data set, they basically wanted to provide a, a a scoring algorithm for this individual to be able to say, based on all this information that we're looking at over the period of time, let's basically give that give this individual uh, a score. Uh, that determines their marketability for us to be able to determine how valuable their data is, um, of course, anonymized, but how valuable that data is to, to potential other businesses or even internally within the organization. Any thoughts?